cameras are okay, therefore we can get into the live session. Okay, welcome to the stream, my friend. How are you? Very, very well. Thank you very much for invitation. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here and uh, yeah, hope you are well too. Yeah, I'm great and I'm happy because uh, I, uh, I, is, I am pretty much, uh, let's say, passionate about learning, about positive uh, life, about positive approach. And when I <clears throat> discovered that you're at the uh, Twitch community and I was some like curious, the guy from Poland, such a positive, the guy who is speaking Polish and English simultaneously, what's wrong? Maybe I am just hallucinating. And that's why I started, let's say, lurking a little bit. Afterwards, I started joining your channel. And now, you know, of course, that uh, I am pretty much very happy that I can be part of your, let's say, uh, community as well. I mean, in general, since our community as chess community overall. Great, yes. Well, uh, what can I... What can I add? What can I add? Yes, I've started streaming um, last year, to be honest, on the beginning of last year, I think it was March. And uh, yeah, then I had a short break during the summertime and then I come back with streaming, uh, I think around uh, September, mm -hmm. so streaming till, till, till now. And indeed, I speak uh, Polish and English. Um, last, last few years, I, I, I lived in the UK, so and uh, now I moved back to Poland and uh, yeah, that's why that's why two languages. Mm -hmm. And that's the, that's the introduction that I wanted to hear. Thank you very much for giving us this uh, sneak preview. And now I'll be trying to ask you some of the questions to make our community know about you more. And in the meantime, to uh, be familiar, how did you, let's say, uh, come up over the ideas that you, you will be a chess streamer, a chess popular, popularizer, and sorry, promoter. And in the meantime, how it is like to play over the DGT board on, on the stream, but we'll be talking it about a little bit later. The first question is what and wh when rather did you start your chess journey? How it started? Well, I've started when I was 14 um, and during the the winter time we had a school break and uh, my older brother took me on one of the tournament uh, local tournament in local uh, kind of club I, I didn't play really chess I knew just moves and because we had lots of times we had no lessons uh, we went there we played some chess and uh, I remember that at this tournament I scored just something like I don't know one or two of nine so I felt really really bad uh, because I had the feeling that I could score more, but it sometimes happened that just I, I, I scored two. So from that moment, I, I decided that I want to learn more because uh, I got the information that this tournament will be like every month. So I went to the library and I took some chess books and I learned everything by myself. So uh, this is how it started basically. So it's all, it's my brother's fault, I would say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Now we know who can be blamed for this, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Okay, excellent. And uh, if, if you can uh, elaborate a little bit about <clears throat> how much uh, energy, how much time you devoted uh, in your early years, because probably early years was a little bit more intense than nowadays, we will be pretty mm -hmm. much grateful because uh, when we are younger, we can devote ourselves pretty much into some of the passions. And as I know, and as I figure out, one of the passions of yours is chess. And how did you, let's say, start uh, going uh, further into the chess world? And how did you start to learn more and more? Because in a moment, it will, it will let's say, re we will reveal that you are already a title player. Uh, well, so on the beginning of my journey, I would say that I divided my time between school and uh, chess. So my free time, I basically uh, spent with chess. Um, when I had some materials, I, I just came back to home and just studied chess. So one day it was like five hours, six hours, sometimes maybe two, three, depends how many duties and other things I had to do during the day. Uh, but to be honest, I would say during this one, two years, I s literally spent all of my free time for chess. And uh, then after one year of just studying and uh, learning chess, reading some books and magazines, um, I started attending to the tournaments and played some tournaments. And uh, it is at, as a, it is actually a, what what um, what really uh, I love when when I play chess that 
when you met people, when you are on the tournament, um, it's completely different thing when you are just sitting at home and studying by your own. Um, so yes, from, from that moment, I would say that I knew that chess would be something, something impo important in my life. But of course, then um, I went for a study. It was a study time and uh, I really had to maybe not spend all my time just playing chess. Uh, I had to really spend more time learning and doing some, some other things. Um, then, well, after, after my study, I finished chemistry, by the way, I'm a chemist. Um, I was considering to stay on a PhD, but uh, then I decided not to go for it. Um, and uh, I opened my business. So um, I was a photographer of straight after the um, study time. And of course, I had to really put more time for my work because I just was on the beginning of this way. And uh, then chess was like a something just like a hobby, nothing, nothing more serious. Because when you start at age number 14, 15, basically you can't really be top of the top and uh, compete with, with uh, top players, let's say in your country or even in your region. But, uh, you know, it's still something I, I like. I, I love spending my free time playing chess. So when I had the chance, I went for the tournaments in my local area and uh, I played as much as I can. But of course, I never took it very, very seriously. It was just fun and hobby. Mm -hmm. uh, then, of course, um, when you have a kind of serious work, you have no enough time to put everything for your hobby. Yeah. And after a few years uh, in Poland, I decided to move to UK, mm -hmm. uh, where also I had my, my business. And then I just spent much more time uh, for photography and uh, chess was like, completely aside thing. Um, after again, few years, I decided to go uh, to one of the local chess club when I finally had a bit more time. And it was also the way for me to learn language because, well, um, when I moved to UK, I really didn't speak English at all. And uh, when you have lots of, lots of, you know, English friends, um, you can, you can pick up language much, much faster, much easier. Yeah. And, uh, so I just connected to things, learning language and my passion. And uh, yeah, when of course you are between nice people and uh, they, they want you to be in this community. So I got some offer from, um, from, from friends to teach in some UK schools. So I was a chess teacher as well in a few English schools, primary, primary schools. Um, just like two years and then I did some some um, coaching things as well in UK so basically I was in UK like eight years and then I come back to Poland uh, recently and uh, this is how it started with streaming because it was the lockdown lockdown time pandemia and um, you know I realized that lots of people are just sitting at home doing really not too much things so I also wanted to you know meet new people, but we couldn't really go anywhere. So I said, okay, let's play chess. Mm -hmm. And then I, it reminds me that I have really DGT chess board. So maybe why not to connect this board yeah. uh, to the computer and play? Okay, I have no opponent friend of me, uh, front of me, but uh -huh. still I can kind of say- You can touch it, right? <laughs> you can touch it and you can play chess on, yeah. on a real board. So yeah, it was the beginning uh, how it started really. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. You're just getting into the, uh, let's say, uh, uh, questions I prepared later. I'm not mm -hmm. sure if there is any leak or something. <laughs> any what? Any leaks? leaks? Some like uh, cyber security. Any leaks from my computer, from my questions that you have the access to? Ah, no, 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 no. <laughs> and that's why I was curious because one of our members, you probably know him, he's a very strong uh, teenager, C-Complex. Uh -huh. you, you recently played him, right? Yes, he has the really. he has the access that is unauthorized. He has some like illegal uh, okay. access to my question. That's why I'm asking is maybe he just let's say borrowed the questions and give it to you. <laughs> I, I will use him in the future for sure. Yeah, yeah, probably he will be a, a great 
let's say, guy to make such things happen. And now a little mm -hmm. bit more serious because you are going into the streaming stuff, but I would like I would like to um, uh, ask one more question uh, because probably you have played into chess teams as well. I mean, some like chess leagues, chess teams. Can mm -hmm. you elaborate about this a little bit? And uh, especially if you played chess teams and leagues in Poland and in England, and what are the differences between them? Which one you like more or less? Something like that. Okay. Well, so of course, when I was like um, 14, 15, 16, uh, I played for some Polish chess clubs. Um, I mean, I mostly played for one club and uh, the name of this club was AKS Mikow. It was just a local club and we reached like a second Polish league. Um, so second Polish division. So yeah, we had the chance to play against quite strong players, I would say. Um, then, of course, when I moved to, to UK, I, as I said, I had a short break with the chess. Then when I attended to the chess club, it was the Ealing Chess Club um, in, in London. And of course, after just one or two years playing for Ealing Chess Club, I knew almost everyone in UK or in London who, who is in this chess community. So uh, a friend of mine asked me to play also for Cambridge University team. So I was a member of Cambridge University uh, for NCL team. Uh, and they played like uh, first division, I mean, in the peak. So we had chance really to play against strong, strong, strong players. Um, in terms of um, comparing two leagues, um, I would say that there is no really big difference. I mean, um, the, the Polish leagues depends on the, on the level. Uh, very often you have one session and you play just nine days, uh, like Polish second league or first league or extra league. Uh, where in UK very often is like a sessions, uh, mm -hmm. view sessions during the uh, period of time. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the first thing. So usually you go for the weekend to the one of the, let's say, Telford, and you play three or two games, three games usually. Mm -hmm. um, and after, let's say, next month, same thing, uh, and next month, same thing. Um, in Poland, usually you play one big league. If it's local leagues, then you're just making matches and you visit your opponent and then they visit you and you play just matches. Um, what, what could I add? Um, Something like what are the bigger differences between playing uh, over the board and in Poland? Something like maybe some like a language barrier, some like different kind of behavior, different uh, let's say uh, rituals. Something like something like what what you remind right yourself. Um, well, definitely, uh, I would say in UK we had a um, very very great team and very very friendly team, and we have we had really. Uh, nice, nice people in the team. So always after, after uh, the league or the match, we went for a nice dinner, and then of course we had some nice party in the local pub. Uh, so sometimes till till morning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so of course this this community thing, the social thing was was excellent in UK. Uh, it doesn't matter how how high high the league was. Uh, you know, you was just next to the David Howell in the bar and just uh, talk about everything. So in Poland, I would say the highest league, they t take everything more seriously. So mm -hmm. um, they really work hard, they, they prepare, they, they don't, you know, they have a good routine. They want to go sleep, you know, on the proper time yeah. and so on. Um, but also, you know, when there's, let's say, 300 people in one place, there's no way that, uh, it, it, you know, you will have no fun. So, especially when you are not fighting for a, um, for a promotion or just uh, your team is not um, about to be relegated. So, um, yeah, I would say that in this kind of things, um, there is not, there is no big difference in terms of language. Well, uh, there are lots of Polish players playing in, in UK teams, also from other countries. So, and always, I never had any any problem with with someone. So everyone always was very very friendly. Mm -hmm. uh, in Poland, is I would say rare that we have uh, forging players, um, probably on the highest level league, yeah. extra league. Yes, that they they do have, but. Um, a part of that, I don't think that in the second or third league there are just 14 players. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so 
Yeah, I would say that if I will have chance, I will I will try to come back to UK and play some more Borussia uh, leagues. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now uh, uh, our friend and uh, your community member, I mean the most active one, Kruschi is asking why you love Kashtanki so much. Can you tell us what <laughs> about the Kashtanki? What is the story? Maybe some like inner joke, inner meme. How would you? Well, the love Kashtanki them so is much? like a uh, candy, it's like a chocolate candy. So. Uh, it's just, uh, you know, sometimes when you need a sugar uh, to think and you have strong opponents like, like my viewers, mm -hmm. you have to extra power. So cash tank is the best way basically to, um, to fight against them and to not lose very, very quickly. After view of them, you, you're just paying like equal. That's the, that's the, that's the reason to be honest. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much, it was pretty, pretty nice. And uh, <clears throat> you just mentioned that uh, it is great to play at uh, chess teams because you can, let's say, make some kind of friends, something like talk with each other, spend the time mm -hmm. with uh, stronger players. And now the question about playing on, over the board, because playing over the board is not that common, especially after the lockdown, after the pandemic and all of the stuff that people started playing online in intensely, sometimes exclusively. And now mm -hmm. I would like you to elaborate a little bit what are the main differences i mean to you and the differences you can observe and you can see if how uh, the players who started playing online are are having with uh, playing over the board because more and more you just uh, let's say mentioned at your streams if i remember correctly that you love playing over the board especially longer mm -hmm. time controls is that correct yes i mean mm -hmm. the first thing i would say on the biggest difference is that well when you are playing chess over the board you are taking it more seriously mm, yeah. that's the first thing usually when you are playing with a longer time control you don't really want to make silly mistake and you don't want to just lose game because you don't want to lose so you you spend more time you will think deeper and better and you will analyze the position and more, much much better basically when you play on the internet we get used to that um, you just play game after the game after the game. If you lose, nothing happens. You play another one and another one, and, and it doesn't have a value really. So um, the first thing is that chess on the on the over the board is has a more value, I would say. The experience is completely different. So the emotions are completely different. Um, indeed, lots of players never played over the board chess. They started playing in the internet, and they don't know really how to. Uh, how it is playing over the board and um, so I always ever recommend everyone to, to, to try at least once or twice to go to the tournament and experience this this um, the situation um, I also have some students who started playing chess and they never attended to the tournaments even if they asked them or forced them even to, to do it <laughs> uh, and just they started learning chess in the internet and they play of the whole life in the internet and it's okay um it's for me like a playing uh, let's say football you can play using the fifa yes mm -hmm. yeah and you can say okay actually it's the same or you can play billard because you have the same angle you just mm -hmm. do what you have to do you so we will say you think exactly the same way how you're supposed to think when you have you are next to the table but the experience is completely different or even poker uh when you are playing, you know, um, via internet in front of the screen, there are no emotions mm -hmm. or no one see your emotions. There is no or even poker if... face and something like facial exactly. expressions you can read, right? So it's definitely two completely different things. Mm -hmm. um, another thing is that, um, yeah, you are taking much more seriously chess over the board. Um, you have to also do moves by your own. You, and you spend much more time. So there are no pre-moves. Yeah. There's no way that in one second you will make 10 moves. Mm -hmm. If you have just five seconds on the clock and two seconds increment, you have to be extremely fast to be able to make move, press the clock, or even if you're playing game where you have 30 seconds increment, you still have to write down the move and keep writing and uh, having the, the all moves on the score sheet. Otherwise you can lose just because of this, this, mm -hmm. this thing. Um, so what, what else, um, 
I guess it may be okay because because you alerted pretty much, and I have another question that's that's pretty okay. What is your uh, let's say over the board and uh, online time control favorite? I do not mean to let's say elaborate much more, but some like a favorite. Why you like specific time controls, uh, especially with time increment or without time increment, and in what conditions? For example, if you have 20 minutes because you are waiting for the bus, you want to like to, like to play, for example, two free blitzes or bullets, right? But if you mm -hmm. have, let's say, another, uh, let's say, entire weekend, right? You rather probably devote it into the longer time control. What about that? Well, for serious stress, I would say longer is better, um, because, uh, well, the game will be on a big, le better level. I would say, uh, more mistakes uh, or more silly mistakes or mistakes where you just lost, maybe not accidentally, but by by something which you normally wouldn't do. Um, so I, I like when the chess quality of the game is, is really on a high level, but to be able to play good quality chess, you have to have time to, to think and to figure out what is going on and uh, to discover some you know, deep ideas on the board. That's the first thing. But of course, when we have no time, then we play faster chess. Sometimes it's good to play, let's say, rapid chess or blitz chess, because to be honest, in the end of the game, usually everyone is in the end game. Uh, where you have just 5, 10, 15 minutes on the clock. So you have to play fast. You have really no choice. And the knowledge how to play endgame under this time pressure is so, so important. On the beginning, everyone has, let's say, two hours. It's, it's much easier to play. But mm -hmm. with shorter time control, this is also the area which is extremely important in order to convert sometimes, um, let's say, the advantage from the middle game and uh, winning the end game under this time pressure. So um, my favorite, of course, is I would say classical one, uh, longer time control, but I still do play uh, rapid chess and, and blitz chess, kind of like a training um, to be ready when the situation happens in, in my classical game play, mm -hmm. let's say, um, quite good. Okay, thank you very much. And now let's talk a, a little bit about teaching and learning chess because you previously mentioned that you have been uh, a coach uh, into the some uh, primary schools and you just mm -hmm. had probably the sessions with the students, uh, let's say group sessions, maybe private sessions. And I would like you to ask about, uh, let's say, how does it feel like to learn chess by uh, from stronger players or maybe the coaches? And how does it feel like if you are the coach and teaching others, right? So like, what are the methods that you use? Maybe some kind of tricks, uh, how to learn and how to teach chess efficient way. Mm -hmm. Well, I started teaching chess for chess in schools and communities uh, in UK. So probably, you know, Malcolm Payne, he's the... Yeah, the chess um, organizer, the, the most popular, exactly. right? Mm -hmm. So I worked for him for his uh, charity and organization. So um, we had a curriculum, so we exactly knew what we need to do. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you visit the school, you have, let's say, certain time of with your students. You, you just um, have first 15 minutes to, to show something on the screen or something on the, on the um, in general, on the, on the chessboard, the, let's on say the, the demo, demo board, right? demonstration demo board. board. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, then there was a time for, for kids when they play chess uh, between each other and uh, you, you were between tables and they gave, gave them some tips, hints and show them where they make mistakes and show them to, to not make mistakes, basically. So uh, I would say it was just, you know, kind of more fun and it wasn't like professional way of, of um, maybe, okay, not professional way, but the point of it is not to make chess professionals, but just to encourage children to play chess and to learn some skills via chess. Uh, so, but it was my beginning. Then I realized that I like it, but I don't like wake up early. Mm. <laughs> so, and you know, when you have you, when you work with the children, at, you have to be at school eight o'clock. It's yeah. like painful. I still can do it. Painful. It's kind of painful. I mean, it gave you lots of energy when you work with the with the kids, and uh, it's it's lots of lots of fun, and um, I really really like it. But um, I prefer to to work more with adults. Uh, so I created my my website Chess Coach London CU UK, and. Uh, then I started having some, some students. So um, 
yes, during the, the last few years, I'm just um, teaching, teaching uh, um, mostly adults. Um, different level, I would say. Um, so from completely beginners to the people who, who know chess very well and I have to prepare myself to the lessons and um, prepare some, some good, good materials to make sure that the lesson is, is helpful for them and they can learn something. And um, that's, that's the thing. Um, yeah, and the, what was the part of the second question? What is the difference from learning from the better ones? Yeah, yeah. Um, if, you, if you are the student, not you are the coach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I never been a student, you know? Yeah. I never been a student, I never had a coach. I but never had my in, own coach. And on your career, some like into the club, into the uh, leagues, never? never? I never had any coach. Wow, really, um, really impressive. So I, I, everything I did by myself and mm -hmm. uh, I never had any session with other coaches. Wow. So yeah, that's, that's how it looks like. I mean, I thought about it, um, but then, you know, as long as you don't know something, you don't know that you don't know it. It's like, it's sometimes good to have someone who will tell you what you don't know. Mm -hmm. um, but because it always was more than a passion, not just something serious, I, I never really went for um, for hiring someone and, and coaching me. Mm -hmm. uh, because I think that if I want, if I have enough time, if I spend or sacrifice my, my life to chess, I can make progress. More or less, I know where are my weaknesses and what I could improve. And um, even if I don't know lots of things which I could improve, I still know what are my weaknesses so I can start with working with it. And if I don't work, for example, on this kind of particular weaknesses, it means that I will work I will not work even if someone will tell me, okay, you have to improve this, 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 or this, because I know what where I should start. And if I am struggling with making progress, mm -hmm. then, then I need someone to help me out as well. Okay. Um, yes, but recently I just started doing some, some training for me and I just uh, finally lift my rating a little bit up. So it's like, I know if I put more time on chess, I will make a progress. We don't know how, how far I can go, uh, I'm an you know, old guy. <laughs> no, 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 no. It doesn't look like, it doesn't look no. like. You're 20 uh, years old, I, I must confess that I needed to ask your mom for permission to be on this stream. Nobody okay. knew it, but I, I need to reveal that I needed to ask your mom for permission because, you know, the teenager sure. needs to have the, needs to have the, let's say, security reasons, right? Yeah, but for uh, yeah, but uh, for more seriously thing, I just wanted to say that you know there is a hope for us. I mm -hmm. mean, for me, sorry. Yeah. Um, as uh, I don't Dinosaurs. know if you are following Grunches, Grunches uh, tour, but Vishwanath and Anand did really great uh, result in the last uh, first two days. So he scored mm -hmm. uh, almost 100 points. So he yeah. drew only very two impressive. Days. So he won five games, he drew one, so at the age of 53, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Um, so there's still hope for us to play good chess, so the age doesn't matter. Yeah, um, Yeah. so yeah, that's, that's, that's I think, um, in terms of teaching, uh, yeah, I started in, in, in UK, then I am now in Poland, but of course most of my students are from abroad, I don't have really Polish students at this moment. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's how it looked like. Okay, thank you very much. And now let's talk a little bit about online, but especially about online uh, education or maybe online promotion, education, all of the stuff that is uh, going on in the internet and just at Twitch especially. Do you think that this, uh, let's say, chess trend after the Queen's Gambit, after the lockdown, all of the pandemia and the, let's say, uh, so uh, our uh, let's say conditions are now just growing or the boom is gone how how can you see that um i would say it's still growing and i think it's good that it's growing um more people play chess better for for the community and um, one of the points which is very um, important to understand is that not everyone has to play on the highest level and sometimes it's even better to play on a kind of lowest level but just having fun with playing chess so we don't have to be professionals we just should enjoy playing chess and this is i would say the most part and 
this kind of uh, platforms like Twitch, YouTube, uh, and others, chess.com, chess helps a lot um, to, to promote and um, yeah, to promote chess basically. Um, so yes, chess is growing definitely now. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if you just elaborate a little bit about your community, especially because you are a chess streamer, you're a chess passionate and you have some uh, community that is pretty much very, very friendly. And in the meantime, you are making they all are, of this stuff are. to extend the community. And to be honest, I am very much, uh, let's say, surprised in a positive sense that you are having such a cultural, such a very high, let's say, level of, uh, let's say, friendliness of your community. Everybody is something like pretty much tricky and in the meantime, supportive, right? And this is something mm -hmm. like a very, very unique community. How have you built such a community and what attracted uh, the people to you to make such a community that uh, I have never seen before? I mean, we have to ask my community. I can't tell for themselves. Uh, I mean, I believe that if you are kind to people, people are kind to you. If you are friendly to people, people are friendly to you. So maybe it worked this way. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I created my channel just uh, because of two reasons. First, I just wanted to play chess and it was the way to play with other people at the same time. And the second thing is that uh, I really, when I moved back to Poland, my, my relations with other friends uh, was kind of not very strong. So it's also the way to get to know some, some new people, yes, where, where you are just, let's say, 10 years not in your country and then you come back and it's like uh, you have no, you know, friends like before yeah. because everyone has their own family, other things to do in life, they, they live in different places. So you kind of still have to start everything from the beginning. And, um, you know, I, I know lots of friends, uh, chess friends, especially chess friends, uh, in Poland, but uh, the relations are not exactly the same when you just don't, um, you are not in, in the country and you don't see them every year or just, you know, more more often. So yeah, this was just one of the reasons as well. Um, and yes, as I mentioned, when I play chess, it's um, I saw that some people are doing it and I said, okay, why not to try doing it as well? So not really big goal, but um, just just for myself and for for others i would say mm -hmm. okay thank you very much <clears throat> and now about the uh, other stuff because uh, in the meantime as we just mentioned you just uh, say that you have another hobby maybe passion maybe it's your job maybe all of the three components what about chess photography or general photography and if you just make some kind of chess photography or chess sessions maybe general sessions how does it f fit into the chess community but in overall as your another passion maybe the job how we can elaborate that chess and photography well it, it it's very very good um, things that if you have skill in photography you have access to chess uh, events Mm -hmm. uh, so you can use it and also meet lots of lots of people. So through the photography, I had chance to to see the best uh, players in the world. I was able to photograph, uh, taking photographs during the World Chess Championship match in 2018 when Magnus faced Caruana. Uh, so I was there. I took for some photographs. Um, but from the beginning, after the study time, I just um, decided that I don't want to be a chemist. And um, during the study time, I also had this passion of photography. I mean, I realized that it was like fifth year of the study and I, we have no memories with my friends. So I bought a camera and I started taking photos. And after just a few, few months, I realized that I'm good at it and people like my photos. So uh, I really... It, it made me lots of lots of fun when I did photos. So um, I decided that I would try to become a photographer. So uh, straight after the study, I just opened my company in Poland and uh, I started doing photos. Uh, I, and mainly, uh, mainly I was a wedding photographer, mm -hmm. and I did some some different other photos as well, but mainly people photos. So I didn't do any you know um, kind of. Uh, commercial photographers, uh, photographs like, uh, or advertised photographs. So mainly I just did photographs where people are. And after three years, I decided to move to UK. Then I, again, worked uh, in UK as a photographer. But um, yes, when I had in this chess community, I also took my camera almost everywhere. So 
during the team matches, during the events, I always took some photos for, for, for my friends. And, um, you know, um, as I mentioned before, uh, I was able to photograph London Chess Classic and some, some important events in, uh, in London, mostly in London or Liverpool. Uh, I also did some, some photos for chess in schools and communities every time when they need photographer, I was there. Uh, so it's it's very good thing that you know you um, care about memories, situations where normally people don't don't do, and there are lots of moments which can disappear, and no one will um, think about it. So um, yeah, that's uh, that's how it looks like um, nowadays. I think about photography more like a business. So mm -hmm. uh, in the past, I did lots of photographs for free now it's like you know the money has to yeah you need to earn be, money to, yeah. to have a you, exactly, Absolutely exactly. obvious. Mm -hmm. so you know <coughs> it's now even i thought that to go to this grand chess tour to, to warsaw to take some photos but then of course i just said that okay it doesn't pay off it's um, i will take nice photos but at the same time you know it's your time it's your job and mm -hmm. uh, that's why i treat now photography like a completely business thing. Uh, of course, I do photos for, for myself. I, I did lots of street photography. It's something uh, I would say very, very difficult, but uh, once you have done nice photos, it's something something you really appreciate and uh, you are happy with. So, you know, 12 good photographs per year is something like, wow. Amazing. Um, so yeah, that's, mm -hmm. that's in terms of <laughs> photography. Um, yeah, what could I add? <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Perfectly fine. Because <clears throat> even if I just put one of the questions, it's fascinating. That's why I was asking about this leak, right? The cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. Because I have prepared some like 20 questions. I just, okay. uh, let's say, put five questions on the list. I just uh, asked the five questions and you already just answered the other ones, if right? The other ones. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's why I, I'm, I'm, let's say, a little bit curious if you have the access to my notes. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I wish I could, um, you know, travel and uh, take photos on all important events and uh, be there and witness uh, everything. Um, but yes, at the same time, it's your time and you have to really get paid for it. Uh, so, and being a freelancer in photography now is extremely, extremely difficult because nowadays everyone is a photographer, everyone yeah. can do it. You don't have to have any special permissions. And this is good because the quality wins always. Yeah, yeah. But you have it's to complete it. Mm -hmm. Yes, but uh, sometimes there were situations where you could work, let's say, a few days, every day, let's say, six hours, and then you will not earn money because no one won't buy your photographs. So mm -hmm. it's like if you still have some bills to pay, yes, and yeah. uh, so on. Uh, so that's why photography at this moment is mainly just a business mm -hmm. and the passion is it's chess. So um, that's how it looks like now. Okay, excellent. <clears throat> and now a little bit about, uh, let's say, streamers on Twitch, but I'll just mm -hmm. ex extend this uh, question a little bit. What are your favorite chess players, streamers and creators? If you can tell us about mm. that. Actually, this is a good question. Thank you very much. Uh, favorite stealers apart you? Hmm. No, no, uh, all <laughs> of the community. I am the special one. We are just excluding yes. on the list. <laughs> okay. Mm, I will be honest. I don't really watch others. Um, mainly because I have no really too much time for it. Um, but if I have to choose someone, I like Dojo. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, they are not maybe very, um, I mean, they are very instructive in terms of chess and they always try to provide lots of um, entertaining and uh, interesting chess stuff. But I know that it's more for, not it's not for everyone, it's more just for chess players. So mm -hmm. uh, it's, they are not extremely popular, like let's say chess bra or others. Yeah. Um, but still the quality of the stream is, is very interesting. Um, Let's... I, I was mm. asking about streamers, players and creators. Take notice that creators may be the YouTube guys, maybe the other ones. For example, the podcast creators, maybe the stream creators that put the streams uh, onto the YouTube. It's up to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, well, I am 
I'm maybe not. Uh, I'm very often watch chess 24 PL, mm -hmm. uh, where a grandmaster. Mateusz Barter and uh, Fide Master Kasper Polok um, are the hosts. Uh, and yes, this is probably the, the, the Twitch channel which I watch the most. Uh, apart of that, really, I just watch if there are some chess events, then, then I watch like now uh, St. Louis Chess Club, for example, when they, they host the, um, the Grand Chess Tour event mm -hmm. uh, or Polish uh, Chess, uh, yeah, th this this kind of things. Mm -hmm. um, so no, I don't really have other 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 channels, other creators to to follow. Okay. Um, simply no time. Okay, that's that's. Mm -hmm. Of course, I know know some of them, but it's not like you know I spend like few hours watching them and uh, following what they do and checking every YouTube they create. Uh, it doesn't mean that they don't do that good job. It means that I have no, no, no time for it. That's the mm -hmm. main reason. Okay, got it. And the last one question from the main ones. And after that, we'll be having the bullet questions. So like the question and answer as quickly as possible. Okay. okay? Some like a little bit of entertaining uh, stuff. The, the last question over the main part is, do you keep its online competitions of strong players? I mean, especially Carson and company, do you keep it them? I mean, online. Yes, I do. Competitions. Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you operate a little bit? Do you do it often? Sometimes? How long? And, well, usually, you know, it's like when I, for example, edit photos from my um, mm -hmm. weddings. Yeah. On, the, on the second computer, there's always something uh, with chess. So if there is a like branches tour, I have it on my second computer and just watch it, but not really paying huge attention what they say, what they do. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, I, I just hear what they. Oh, let's in terms of creators, maybe or maybe not creators, uh, commentators. Peter Swidler is one of my favorite. I always yeah. enjoy listening him, and I think the quality of of, of the comments he he gives are amazing. Um, so yes, there is always something in the background when when I do my main job. Therefore, you are following the stuff, even not that much. Let's say intense, right? With the yes. focus, mm -hmm. right? Okay. That's Thank right. you very much. Mm -hmm. And one question from our friend uh, from the community, Nikolaos. Nikolaos uh, asks, or maybe put the sentence, I would like you to comment a little bit at least. One photo is a thousand words, but how many chess moves can display? Infinite number of moves. <laughs> <laughs> excellent, excellent answer. And now let's go into the bullet questions. And the goal of bullet questions is make some kind of entertainment. And the, let's say, main idea about it is not to think, right? It's something mm -hmm. like bullets. You're, I'm just okay. asking, you're just re, uh, you're just re, uh, answering. By the way... Can I you, do pre-moves? Yes, yes, you can You can make some kind of pre-moves, yes. <laughs> yes, yes, no, no, yes, yes. No, no, it, may, it must be a little <laughs> bit, a little bit, uh, let's say, various one. And in the meantime, mm -hmm. if you, let's say, do not understand or if you would like me to repeat or rephrase sure. the question, just let me know, okay? Mm -hmm. Are you ready? Yeah. Playing white or black? White. Men or women? Women. On the board or online? On the board. Winning against international master or drawing grand master? Winning against international master. Okay. Winning over the board or flagging? Winning over the board. Mm -hmm. Teaching chess or learning chess? Teaching chess. Favorite color? Uh, orange. Next would be favorite. Now think. I Say mean again? favorite favorite thing. All of the time it would be favorite, and another would be additional from mine. Favorite color. Favorite thing. Uh, yes. Okay. Hero. Michael Jordan. And activity. Chess or basketball. Okay. And now the questions uh, uh, both both sides. Running or swimming. Mm, running. Riding a bag, bike or a car? Or driving car. a car? Mm -hmm. Watching or listening? Watching. Reading or playing? Playing. Thinking or sleeping? Thinking. Being on Finger Teacher stream or making your own stream? <laughs> <laughs> Got it! 
I got you. I got you. Uh, <laughs> Start analyzing. Yeah, of course. We, we, even if it's bullet, we analyze. Um, I would say both. Yeah, yeah. Of course, it was it was a little Very bit tricky. Very diplomatic and yes. Yeah, because, because nobody nobody can ban ban you except Gruchi, right? I would definitely encourage everyone to play chess on the board if they have chance. Mm -hmm as it's a really fun and completely different thing than playing just on the screen and in the internet. Mm -hmm. um, and if someone never been on the tournament, uh, try to go and play. Let's make a short summary about today's meeting. Let me know did your uh, experience or maybe were you aware that we have already uh, made it over 80 minutes or some like precise 80 minutes that we just make the let's say estimation and I was some like that Patrick don't worry I'll just prepare it I'll just put all of the stuff and if you let's say will be my guest I'll do my best to make it happen what about that mm -hmm. well it was like five minutes to be honest uh, except this first checkmate in three which took me ages <laughs> um, that's that's the first thing but uh, yes I really really like um, you know uh, being on the on your stream and uh, having chance to to be here mm -hmm. uh, and talk with you of course about chess and uh, yes playing this this uh, puzzle riser as well i i have to practice more and we will take a revenge maybe next time no problem. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yes it was of course very 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 entertaining and fun Okay, thank you very much. And just one question, because I am just, let's say, processing all of the stuff that we have already done. But I am super curious. If I uh, if I didn't ask them this question, I couldn't sleep. Okay. Mm -hmm. How is uh, how is it that possible that you are providing such a great uh, stuff in a chess sense and in a philosophical or the life, uh, let's say, sense in the meantime? Because I mean, in your in your community, you know what I mean. Because you are not playing chess, so I'm like, okay, we are just playing chess. We are, we are not doing anything more than that. Because sometimes there are some kind of very much philosophical questions. We said to it was about the pigs, remember? About the farmers, about the pigs, right? Mm -hmm. The prices of all of the stuff. How is it possible yeah. that you, let's say, uh, provide such a environment and attract such, uh, let's say, great people that there is uh, that many stuff going on? Everybody's enjoying. There is the discussions in the background, and everybody is happy. At least from my perspective. How is it possible? What do you do, and what does your community do? Maybe. Mm, what about that? Yeah, it's, it's my community's fault. They are great. They are excellent. So you know, even if 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 sometimes sometimes you are tired or it's late and you are you know exhausted after the whole day, you just still <laughs> want to uh, start streaming and just show up for for. Uh, even short one two hours to talk with with uh, your community mm -hmm. and uh, yeah because there are always always people waiting and having a nice uh, nice topic to to cover and to talk to and yes they they always want also the song request so lots of great music as well yeah and to be honest <laughs> so, I'm, I'm not kidding mm -hmm. your community is very special because not only you are just providing the stream in polish in english simultaneously you are bringing the best out of the people, the people with the high class, I'm not kidding, I'm really serious. And in the meantime, <clears throat> there is a very nice, uh, let's say, uh, opportunity to play against you, either in the Simul, either in a, let's say, a normal tournament or any, uh, any other kind of activities. And in the meantime, there are some great discussions in the background, very, very nice and very, let's say, tricky jokes, some like the inner jokes from your channel. And, mm -hmm. and this is something like a very unique, you know what I mean? I, mean, I, haven't, maybe... I haven't seen such a stuff probably in a, let's say, last two years, maybe once or twice, but it is okay. not common if I can say that. Maybe also the reason is that, you know, we have not huge community where, mm -hmm. uh, where uh, let's say, there are thousands of thousands of people and not everyone can just talk and uh, what they want to say. We are still quite small, so everyone always on the chat is easily visible and uh, if someone say something other easily can reply and start talking about some nice topics so uh, i mean maybe the the number of of the channel is the mm -hmm. the answer uh, maybe that's that's the reason because you know if you have let's say five thousand hundreds um 
you know followers followers or mm -hmm. just a few thousand viewers at the same time it's really hard to uh, have nice conversation about something something meaningful mm -hmm. um, so maybe the number that's maybe the uh, the main thing because usually I stream during the you know night time as during the day I do other things so there are only the the guys who don't sleep at night and maybe you know other people just go to sleep and that's why there are they are not too much too much people on the chat in the at night so we have time to, to yeah, cover there are, there nice are the topic. special nights if I can call them there are the special nights everybody is chilling yes. everybody's uh, let's say having fun and in the meantime it's something like a very cozy place that you provide excellent atmosphere and I'm not I, I'm not kidding I'm really serious that this is the special case that I was pretty much uh, I, I could not comprehend it how it is going on that this is such a unique place that there is no toxicity right there is no stuff that is something like going against each other at least from my knowledge there are no cheaters or maybe a very very rare occurrence and everybody is having fun everybody is learning everybody is sharing something important even if some, sometimes there are some kind of arguments right and there are no battles i mean in a negative sense what about that yeah i think we never had any serious battles mm -hmm. um but of course uh, every everyone has own opinion and it's okay that we have different opinions about yeah it's different... the acceptance of various points right mm -hmm. so and you know when you respect others and they respect you you can talk about the other uh, about some some interesting topics so um yeah, build up your own heaven and you'll be happy. <laughs> that's, okay. that's, the, uh, that's the point. Okay, I and mean... there are just two questions from the chat. Actually, maybe not the questions, but first one is, I mean, the background of, of yours. How did you prepare the background? I mean, is it something like a special one or is it something like for the special meeting with Finger Teacher? Because there is, uh, I mean... there is the, let's say, cozy place that you are just providing with, uh, let's say, uh, taking care of each detail. You know what I mean? But this is mm -hmm. like aesthetically very pleasing to watch you, even without any, let's say, uh, music or voice. How mm -hmm. did you manage this? Uh, maybe yes, because of my my photography background, and you know, I pay attention to mm -hmm. to what I see, and uh, that's the first thing. Um, also, the composition also, you know, is important for me. When, for example, when I watch movies now, I sometimes pay less attention to the conversations or or the things which happening in the movie but more how the the scene is built up what the what the composition is what the light is and this kind of thing so it's kind of natural thing to me that i just immediately see that for example uh, you have a shadow on the left or yeah. part of your 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 face and the, your light is probably from here and you're just spotting uh, every every of this stuff due to being passionate about the photography is it correct yes because i have to basically work yeah with with light and this kind of things every day so it's like very, very natural thing to me mm -hmm. and yes in terms of my background it's just uh, because you know electricity in Poland is so expensive so i <laughs> invested in in candles electrical candles i just charge from time to time yeah. batteries and um, yeah, that's it's, the, it's a good idea of, to say that's energy. the solution. Yeah, excellent. Yes. And one more uh, about the stuff related to being on real life. I mean, <clears throat> and Amethyst Drago asked uh, when will we have the opportunity to meet Patrick live? I mean, over the board, uh, that's what he meant. For example, mm -hmm. at the some tournaments, maybe. Well, I'm considering view tournaments during the summertime. Mm -hmm. One of them is um, the tournament in Suwałki. It's the uh, north part of Poland, yeah. uh, east northeast part of Poland, and um, that's the one. The second one is Ustron, is the south part of Poland. Mm -hmm. um, that's the second thing. Um, then there is a second Polish league on the beginning of September, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. uh, before maybe I will play one more. So I think. Three, four tournaments during the summertime would be something I would like to do. Mm -hmm. um, of course, in the meantime, I have some weddings, so I have to make sure that, you know, yeah. I, I have it's time job, between right? them. 
it's, mm-hmm. it's a job. So um, yes, this time I have kind of less weddings than, than before the pandemic time and I have more time for chess. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I will try to try to use the time and uh, play chess, have fun basically. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, life is too short. So use it and have fun as yeah. quickly as you can. Yeah. And as far as far as far as I know, you will <clears throat> inform your viewers with this, let's say, uh, tournaments in some kind of, uh, let's say, previous schedule, right? If you know. Yes, of course. The, the, mm-hmm. We have a Discord, and the, you know all information about my uh, my my place uh, and attending the tournaments are always there. Mm-hmm. So yeah, they they will know, and you will know as well. And if someone is you know living close to. The place where I will be visiting, I'm more than happy to meet and you know have a good coffee or beer or something. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's that's how it looks like. And um, yeah, the, the the closest one um... probably at the half of the end of the July. Is that what what I am having in mind? Probably. I mean, now I have to fly to UK for for some weddings mm-hmm. uh, on the beginning of the next uh, month. Uh, yeah. Maybe I will try to attend to one of the tournament in UK to visit some friends and maybe some rapid tournament mm-hmm. uh, if I will have the time. Mm, but also, you know, almost every day I have some some coaching session as well. So yeah. with my students. So it's like you have to you have to really. Um, manage with your time wisely and uh, yeah, to have time for everything. Mm-hmm. And for the last <clears throat> part of the, our conversation, uh, our friend uh, Nikolaos uh, says something like, it is a perfect combination, I have given this, let's say, introduction, that Patrick and uh, Finker teacher has great backgrounds and it is the full of compre- comprehensive knowledge. It's something like we are just <laughs> complementary, right? <laughs> That's why yeah, I, nice I, comment I, indeed. Yes, mm-hmm. and that's why I like, like such stuff because I do not mean appreciation of mine because everybody knows I'm the best. <laughs> no, one, no, right? it's very, very nice. You know, my my old books are actually on the floor. I have lots of I'm I have a huge collections of uh, photography books. Uh huh. Um, but you know, in my place, I still have to buy a nice place to put them all. But they are extremely heavy. Like yeah. um, I don't want to even check how 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 heavy they are. But you know, it's like. I have to make sure that they will not fall down. Yes, to fall apart. The same with my background, right? Because I have just made these bookshelves and they needed to be very, very solid. Otherwise, I would be a little bit scary. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Okay, and any other, let's say, uh, last comments, last questions. But in the meantime, I would like uh, rather ask you about some kind of reflections, right? Because we have just made some kind of experience, some kind of meeting, some kind of knowledge <clears throat> that we exchange. And are there any, uh, let's say, feelings or uh, thoughts of yours that you would like to share with us, with the audience, related to this meeting, to this, let's say, place and time that we devoted into our uh, collaboration and meeting? Well, first of all, play chess, guys, as much as you can. Uh, solve puzzles, uh, like puzzle racer we've done with Tom. Uh, the second thing, uh, visit Tinker Teacher stream as often as it's possible, and uh, because he's he's uh, providing the excellent uh, educational uh, stream, so you can learn a lot, and uh, it's uh, you know kind of uh, chess teacher for free. So you have a huge amount of great chess knowledge just for free. So um, yeah, I would say, yeah, this this is definitely something what everyone should do when you have a time or uh, even after if Tom is not there, there is a, a options to, to watch the video after. So um, I, I definitely, definitely recommend Tinker Teachers uh, channel and um, hope you will visit as um, as often as possible. Yeah, thank you very much. <clears throat> I really appreciate it. In the meantime, I shared uh, the links to your channel as well because you have that uh, great, uh, let's say, atmosphere channel that I am absolutely, uh, let's say, sure that all of uh, the viewers, no matter from my community or outside your community, while they bring <clears throat> into your one, it would be something like an extended of the friends, right? Friends circle. Mm-hmm. And that's why I'm happy Excellent. about it. And I, in the meantime, <clears throat> I want to thank you very much for providing this stuff providing the, uh, let's say, opportunity 
to learn chess to play against you because you're a title player and it is pretty much a very great experience to play against stronger players as well. In the meantime, <clears throat> when you're explaining, when you're talking with each other, it sounds like absolutely amazing and I am really, really, uh, let's say, grateful for that and I want to thank you very much in behalf of our community in general, not just the Twitch, but overall community for making such a great service. Yes, I'm also happy that I can, as I mentioned before, be here and be part of your community as well. So thank you, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you very much. And I, I am pretty much happy that we could do it. We just crossed uh, one hour, 30 minutes. Therefore, I guess it's a perfect combination for making this. And just one one question probably. Uh, Amethyst, I have a question for Pinker Jr. Can you say Poko Hei Shachi? Maybe Patrick will help. Okay, let's teach our audience to, let's say, uh, pronounce this uh, in Polish. Can you do it, Patrick? Poko uh, Hei Shachi. Mm -hmm. Yes, and now um, me, Poko Hei Shachi. And now, very briefly, how did you come up over maybe this name? Maybe it's for the last one of, of the last. How did you come over this name for the channel? Well, to be honest, I steal it. Yeah, but uh, what is the history of that? <laughs> the history of that is um, there is a similar YouTube channel, Pokohai Photography. It's like oh. fall, fall, fall in love to photography. Mm -hmm. So a friend of mine is, is uh, having a great company um, where he is traveling around the world uh, with uh, people who want to uh, learn photography and he basically provides lots of lots of great photography stuff, um, visiting amazing places uh, with people who want to learn, learn photography. So uh, he also <clears throat> viewers ago created a nice uh, photo magazine. So like every few months, uh, there is a great collection of photographs in that magazine and some interviews and so on. I mean, recently it, he doesn't really do it so often but uh, it was by basically the inspiration for me to do something similar uh, in terms of the name of this channel and yeah then the main idea of course is that everyone can play chess doesn't matter how uh, when we start playing chess and uh, what is our goal chess for most of us is just uh, fun or just great hobby and and I hope this this channel will help some people who are not uh, maybe convinced to start playing chess, or they they hesitate, or they uh, think that they are too too old to start playing chess, or maybe that they have some doubts. Then then I am here to help. Okay, excellent. <clears throat> Thank you very much. And now we are wrapping up because we have provided all of the stuff we planned. I'm one more time want to thank you very much, Patrick, for providing this stuff over your channel, over community, and agreeing to uh, accept the invitation to our uh, session. And I guess it was pretty much fruitful and uh, probably it was entertainment as well, because I wanted to make some like both a little bit of education, a little bit of entertaining and a little bit of some like reflection over all of the stuff we provided. Thank you very much and uh, thank take you, care. Thank you very much. And as see well. you next time. Mm -hmm. Bye bye. Thank you very much, Tom. See you next time. See you bye bye.